But first, let's turn to an old friend here. It's the Saab 900. Now, this basic shape has been around since 1967, and over the years it's been honed and polished. The nice thing about the 900 is that it's never lost its distinctive character. Of course, some of you might just say it looks weird. The Saab is a car that dares to be different and succeeds. Well, the 900 should be with us for a while to come, but we know that nothing lasts forever. Because here rides the Saab 9000, the Highline stablemate of the 900 series and Saab's all-new platform for the future. This time, all-new isn't a cliché. If the 900 and all the early Saabs were like 60s rebels in the automotive world, then the 9000 is the rebel turned 80s bank president. First off, this is no conscientious compact. In most ways, it's the biggest car Saab's ever built. The 9000's 105.2 inch wheelbase is six inches longer than the 900's and three inches wider. Overall, though, it's five inches shorter. Thanks to a wider cut and an efficient body design, the 9000 has interior room that puts it with the likes of full-size Electras and 98s. Velour covering is standard and leather is an option. There's lots of leg room and plenty of seat support for passengers front and rear. Entrance is easy thanks to very wide and tall doors. It's obvious this is a car meant to please buyers who are looking for careful car design so you get other smart features too. Deep storage wells and all doors. Adjustable height for front shoulder belts. It keeps being safe from being a pain in the neck. And you don't have to search under the dash for a fuse panel. It's neatly placed just inside the glove box. And how about this blackout space on the windshield? It blocks any glare that tries to sneak between the sun visors. The dash is one of the best in recent memory. All the controls fall, as they say, readily to hand. And that includes the standard five-speed shifter. And while we're on the subject, it's smooth and fairly precise. Saab's best yet. A four-speed automatic is an option. The analog gauges are backlit, with data for water temperature, turbo boost, and fuel. A digital readout covers voltage and fuel used as part of its trip computer functions. And the obligatory 80s sedan panic panel to show you which door is really ajar. They've even put in some very un like creature conveniences, such as this rear seat cup holder. The steering wheel is telescopic, but its full forward position might block some people's view of the fuel and boost gauges. A tilt adjustment would do the trick, but there isn't any. In some ways, the 9000 got a little too trendy. Just as the folks in Detroit were discovering Saab's excellent rotary ventilation controls, Saab stopped using them. They now favor this standard, fancy electronic climate control system. When you start the car, the system sets itself based on outside conditions. That's nice, but our personal preferences meant constant resetting, and there's no way to turn the system off completely. And to top off their entry into upwardly mobile sedandom, the folks at Saab finally located the ignition switch where everyone else does, on the steering column, not down by the shifter as in earlier Saabs. But the 9000 isn't a complete conformist. Saab made it a five-door hatchback, even though some Detroit marketing types say Americans won't buy upmarket sedans that have hatches. Too much like a common economy car, you know. But we're not snobs. We like the hatchback's low sill and utility and the folding split rear seat and all the 9,000's cargo room. Around front, the hood opens like most cars. Again, unlike past Saabs that opened clamshell fashion. But there is a familiar Saab design under the hood, even though it's now been turned sideways. The 16-valve four-cylinder with turbocharger and intercooler. The two-liter engine makes 160 horsepower and 188 pound-feet of torque. Our five-speed Saab with five doors, luxury and all, beat the numbers we got last year with the Saab 900 Turbo 16. The quarter mile took just 16.2 seconds with a final speed of 87. Zero to 60, just 7.6 seconds. 40 to 55 passing time was an amazingly short 3.6 seconds in third gear. The 9000 has McPherson struts up front rather than the typical Saab coil spring A-arm setup. 
At the rear, there's still a solid axle, as on the 900, with all sorts of locating links and an anti-sway bar. The result is the usual Saab solidity. Body roll is minimal, and the steering is so precise that you forget it's power-assisted. The Saab 9000 is further proof that an all-independent suspension is not necessary to make an amazingly fine-handling front-drive car. Brakes were almost as impressive. The four-wheel disc setup showed a bit of rear lock, but the pedal was easy to modulate. Our Saab stopped straight, and in a very short average distance, a remarkable 102 feet from 55. When it's not stopping, the 9000 has a fairly supple ride out on the highway. EPA rates the Saab 9000 turbo at 21 city, 28 highway. We returned a figure of 26. Good for a car with its power and size. The 9000, born from a joint effort between Saab, Fiat Lancia, and Alfa Romeo, hit us just right in a lot of ways. It feels solid and safe, perhaps more than any other front drive sedan. It's carefully designed for all its missions with well above average performance, luxury, and utility. And the few items we cared less for, well, the Saab 9000 could do with a simpler to adjust automatic climate control. You know, one you could turn off when you wanted to. And the steering wheel should tilt as well as telescope, so all gauges are clearly visible for all drivers. We'll add one other disappointment, the Saab 9000's base price of $21,945. Certainly that is very competitive with similar featured Audis and BMWs, and the 9000 includes a super duper stereo and sunroof. But that price will put it out of sight for many a long time Saab loyalist. So we leave the 9000 with a very positive but slightly unsettled feeling. Some of us like the iconoclastic quirks of the older Saabs. We may find the 9000's design too conventional. It is superior in function to all Saabs before, so by definition, it is to almost every other car too. It'll win over a lot of youthful professionals who thought about owning a Saab, but were put off by its dare-to-be-different appearance. And that was a big motive for the 9000, and by all our measures, this car should be a big winner.